Let's spend a few minutes getting familiar with Application Perspectives, the newest release from Instana. The first thing I'll point out is that you have access to the new version by using this toggle button. As you can see, I'm currently in classic mode, so let's go ahead and switch to Application Perspectives. As you can see, I've already got some Application Perspectives configured here in my Instana environment. You probably have some too, so perhaps some that your colleagues have created. It's really easy to create an application perspective and it doesn't actually have anything to do with how the data is captured or stored. Application perspectives are just that. They're perspectives on the services that are being executed by your users. In fact, once you've got the Instana agents deployed, Instana automatically captures and maps all of your services without you needing to do anything. Here's a list of all the services that are running right now in my install environment. And again, I didn't have to do anything to configure this. The services are automatically captured and mapped. Looks like there's quite a few running here. I've got about eight pages worth of services. You probably have a lot of services uh, running in your environment as well. <clears throat> I can easily filter. So for example, if I was really interested in say HTTP services, I could filter based off of the type of service here, HTTP, or perhaps my focus is more from a techno technology standpoint. Perhaps I'd like to filter on Spring Boot services and uh, I can combine the two. So maybe I wanna look at just the Spring Boot mes messaging services. So you can see it's a great way to get an overview of all your services and their KPIs, calls, latency, and error rate. But what if I, you know, what if I don't want to filter on technology or type, but I want to filter on a particular application, you know, just show me the services that are part of this application or just show me the services that are part of this environment. Well, that's exactly where application perspectives come comes into play. You know, like any enterprise, these services here are running across different applications and different environments. In my case, I've really got mainly two applications that I monitor with Instana. I've got the single music application and I've got Stan's robot shop. As you can see, we've already got a couple application uh, perspectives created to focus in on the single music application. I've got one that's going to allow me to dig into single music running in production and I've got one for single music running in staging. You can see we've also got a couple here that are more from a cloud provider perspective, the services running in Amazon versus the services running in Google. But what you can see what's missing is there's no application perspective for Stan's robot shop. And that's, uh, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna create an application perspective for Stan's robot shop. As you can see uh, quite conveniently, we've got the create application perspective button right here on this screen. Now, if you don't see that button, it means your account doesn't have permissions to create applications. So, you know, just check with your Instana administrators. So let's go ahead and click here. Again, it's really easy, super easy to create an application perspective. Let's say I'll call it Stan's Robot Shop. Got to give it a name. <clears throat> and then we're going to select uh, one or more tags that will be used to filter the services. Um, you can see that there's quite the long list of available tags here. Perhaps you're using Kubernetes. You know, feel free to use one of the Kubernetes tags. Perhaps you're using Docker. Again, a number of Docker-related tags. You know, if you're not using Kubernetes or Docker, that's just fine. Maybe you're using Amazon tags or Instana tags. Or if you're not using those tags, maybe you want to do it based off of the zone. And you can even go all the way down to the call level look at things like the batch job name or the <clears throat> database schema or the HTTP URL. So, you know, quite a long list and it should be really easy for you guys to, uh, to choose the right tags. For me, I am using Instana tags. So I've got a tag called application. And in this case, uh, it's going to be robot shop. So that's really all there is to it. You can uh, select multiple tags, but in my case, I just need one. Again, the agent tag application equaling robot shop. I will go ahead and create that application perspective. And it will take a few seconds for it to spin up. So uh, while we wait, 
let me show you how service mapping works in application perspectives. As I mentioned earlier, services are mapped automatically and there shouldn't be anything you need to do, but service mapping is a little different now than it was in Instana Classic. As you can see here, services are now derived from infrastructure components like hosts, containers, and processes. And this table here shows what the predefined rules are that we use to map the services. And again, as you can see, it is predominantly infrastructure based. So the names of the services as they appear in the Instana user interface are gonna be based around these rules. And you can see there'll be you know, container names or Spring Boot names, JBoss names, JVM names, Ruby names, etc. So again, a little, di little different now than it was in Instana Classic. Now uh, your services are gonna have more of an, an infrastructure based uh, name. <clears throat> So let's switch back to Instana and uh, we'll check our data here. Sure enough, we've got data now in Stan's robot shop. So let's go ahead and drill into it. So this is our application dashboard and uh, you can see we've got our key performance indicators here. Again, calls, error rate, and latency. But now they're focused entirely on our Stan's robot shop application. <clears throat> meaning just those services that are part of Stan's robot shop. Now you'll remember earlier we saw, you know, many pages, eight pages or so worth of services running. And uh, as you can see here, we're now able to focus in on only those 10 services that are part of Stan's robot shop. I can also see those services here on the main summary page from my application perspective. And I can look at the top services ranked by latency calls and errors. I can then drill into one of the services um, directly here via the link. And you'll see now I'm on the service dashboard and it's got the same look and feel here. So real easy to use. Same KPIs, calls, error rate, latency. <clears throat> but now again, I'm focused on the RS catalog service that's part of Stan's robot shop. Now at this level, at the service level, on my service summary dashboard, I have visibility into <clears throat> the top endpoints for this service. Again, I can rank them based off of latency calls and errors. And the endpoint mapping is also completely automatic with nothing required on your, on your part, just like with the service mapping. I can then drill into an endpoint. <clears throat> Look at that. I'm on the endpoint dashboard now. Same KPIs, <clears throat> same look and feel, but again, now we're looking at the uh, uh, get slash product endpoint of the RS catalog service that's part of Stan's robot shop. So there you go. As you can see, again, it's super easy to create your own application perspectives. And of course, there's a lot more that's new and improved in this release. So I encourage you to go out, create some application perspectives and start digging into the data. Thanks.